it's Sunday morning, May the 8th, 2022. It's Mother's Day, and congratulations to you moms today. And we pray that, God's, that God would give his very best blessings to you today and give you joy in your motherhood. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and it's a joy to be able to share some truths with you from the Word of God today. This morning we're going to begin a section in Proverbs chapter 23 that uh, will last for several days. The context is several verses long, and we're going to take just a couple of those verses today and continue and sort of develop this subject as we go on the subject of alcohol as a beverage. And I believe that the Bible strongly condemns the use of alcohol as a beverage. And we'll see this as we study this portion of Scripture in Proverbs chapter 20, 23, verse 29 and 30. Just these two verses today. The Bible says, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. And of course, what he's talking about here is fermented wine or fermented drink as a beverage. And the Bible talks about woe and sorrow and redness of eyes and wounds without cause. And a whole lot of negative things happen when people start drinking booze. I've often said from the pulpit of our church that I have the absolute guaranteed uh, indisputable way that somebody will never ever ever become an alcoholic in their lifetime all they have to do is determine that they will never take the first drink and it, i think it's ridiculous that people contend that alcoholism is a disease it's not a disease it's the ensnarement of a sin and people bring a whole lot of evil down on themselves when they choose to follow that sin and, and finally they become ensnared by it and they become captivated by it and some people say oh i can't quit it's an it's an addiction certainly but it's an addiction that's by choice it's not because of some bacteria or virus in the air that somebody caught it's embracing sin by choice until that sin snares the soul and snares the life and creates an addictive condition and every sin is addictive Every sin is destructive, and we choose those sins ourselves. And the Bible gives a whole list of the negative things that go along with drinking alcohol as a beverage. He mentions there in verse 29, woe and sorrow and contentions and babbling, wounds without cause, redness of eyes, and it's caused by those, by people tarrying along at the wine, people, people giving themselves over to fermented beverages alcohol as a beverage it will cause all kinds of problems in a person's life and statistically speaking i think a large a large a very large percentage if not the majority of traffic deaths are attributed on one level to the use and abuse of alcohol and so much domestic abuse lies at its very lies at the at, at, has at its, at, at its at its very heart at its very center the misuse of alcohol and all kinds of issues, all kinds of problems occur, um, immorality and divorce and all these things, they're all attributable to the use of alcohol as a beverage. And the Bible says over and over again, don't go near it. Don't drink it. Don't touch it. It will bring destruction to your life. And we'll see this in tomorrow's verse of scripture where the Bible says, don't even touch it. Don't even look at it. Don't go near it. It will destroy you. I've got a paper in my office that has something like 150 uses of fermented alcohol uh, in the Bible, the terms, where the term appears. And, firm, and it's obvious it's talking about strong drink or fermented uh, a drink as a beverage. And in every case, except one in every case except one it's placed in a very negative light negative things happen as a result of people using alcohol as a beverage the only positive reference is there at the end of the book of proverbs where the bible speaks of the use of strong drink as a as an anesthetic 
as something that will take away a person's pain who's going to die as the source of of the individual's uh, desire to escape suffering and so drink it says give strong drink to him that's ready to die and that is a medicinal use and certainly not for pleasurable use or for use of alcohol as a beverage where most in which most people partake of alcohol just follow god's word just stay away from it and you won't have the woe and the sorrow and the redness of eyes and the contentions and the wounds without cause that the Bible describes so prevalently and so commonly for those who choose to use alcohol. Just stay away from it. You say, you, you mean you believe in teetotaling? Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't even go near it. Totally abstain from it. This whole argument of it's okay to drink as long as you don't get drunk. Well, my contention has always been that you had to get drunk at some point to even know how many drinks you can take before you get drunk. What a foolish argument that is, and certainly not one that would be endorsed in the Bible. Just do the right thing. Stay away from booze and determine it's destructive and it's not good for you and it will not bring you good. It'll bring only evil in your life and swear it off and get rid of it and don't drink be the kind of person God wants you to be and don't intentionally walk into a destructive, self-destructive mode of behavior. God bless you today.